the Ferry Building. It's one of San Francisco's most famous landmarks. Its location at the intersection of the Embarcadero and Market Street connects the port and the city's financial district. At its peak, as many as 50,000 commuters pass through the hub each day. One of the things that one has to keep in mind regarding San Francisco is how young a city we are. Nothing was really happening here before the gold rush. There was a small Spanish garrison in the Presidio, and then there were furriers, fishermen, sailors that would come in here to rest and repair their ships, but at any given time, there might be 350 people in San Francisco. And then the gold rush happened. By 1849, there were 24,000 individuals here, and they were all here to start a new life. By 1850, there were roughly 16,000 ships in the bay, but no sailors. They had left town in search of gold, leaving their ships behind. So the early city leaders took care of this by scraping the sand hills along Montgomery Street, scuttled the ships in the bay, and covered them with sand, creating San Francisco's iconic waterfront. When you look at a map of San Francisco, we have a unique street grid and one of the reasons for that is those streets started off as extremely long piers. But by 1875, they knew that they needed a little more organization. So the first ferry building was built. It was an all wooden affair and the horse carts turned around at the ferry building picking up people and goods. And then later on, the streetcar, the trams, came over to that area also. But by the late 1880s, San Francisco had grown to the point that we knew we needed something better than the wooden ferry building. A bond issue was passed for $600,000 to build a new ferry building. And I always say $600,000 doesn't even get you a studio apartment in San Francisco now, but they thought that would be enough for a grand ferry building. So they had a competition to hire an architect and they chose a young aspiring architect named A. Page Brown. He traveled to Europe and he looked at the transit stations in Milan and Paris. I mean, San Francisco had grand plans for this transit station. So he proposed this beautiful new building. He wanted it wider than it actually is, but the cost of concrete came in too high. And unfortunately, A. Page Brown did not live to see it completed. He was in a buggy accident and killed. But it opened to great acclaim and then kind of became fully operational by 1898. When it was first put into use, Carriages and horses were the primary mode of transportation, but Market Street was built up enough with several tram lines, streetcars that could go right up to the door and go all along the Embarcadero, but also up uh, Market Street, Mission Street, up through Knob Hill and to the Fisherman's Wharf area. And then the earthquake hit in 1906, and the ferry building survived. The only thing that had to be corrected was the facade of the clock tower. 80% of the city did not survive. The brick and wooden buildings collapsed, the streets buckled, the street lines broke and splintered, so the trams weren't running, and buildings had been dynamited during the three-day fire after the quake, trying to stop this massive fire that destroyed the city. So just think of the devastation in the city. The cable car tracks, they, they were just a mess. Every, the streets were all torn up and the city fathers really, really wanted to have the populace think they were on top of things. So two weeks after the earthquake, they kind of jerry-rigged a way of getting a streetcar to run that wasn't on a cable track. They ran electric wires to get this streetcar to run. 
And this was pretty controversial because the transit system wanted electric cars, but the vote was against it. So the earthquake gave them a chance to really start showing how electric is easier. So that showing, we're gonna, we're gonna get on top of this. It would take nearly 10 years for the city to rebuild. Fair use was steadily increasing. And to celebrate, San Francisco hosted the Panama Pacific International Exhibition in 1915. I don't think people realize um, how much of a, a community center the ferry building was. It was the center for celebrations. The upper level of the ferry building, it was a gathering place. Also, whenever there was a war, like the Philippine War or World War II, World War I, the soldiers came in through the building and it was usually a big parade for them up Market Street, but the ferry building would be festooned with banners saying, welcome home. So just to give you an idea of just how central it was to city life, and that's what A. Page Brown wanted in his design for it to be a gathering place. In the ferry building's heyday, it was the second busiest transit station in the world. This is how people got around. This was transit, and so the city totally depended on this. And of course, 1915 was an important year because that was the year of our Pan Pacific International Exposition. So we had 18 million visitors coming to San Francisco, and this was supposedly to celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal. But really, it was San Francisco's way of saying we're back in business after the earthquake. We had 23 different ferry boats running to Marin, East Bay, Alameda, and they made 180 trips a day. It was, it was a way of life. In 1918, San Francisco was hit hard by the flu pandemic, and the city implemented mask mandates to help flatten the curve. Anyone caught without a mask in groups of two or more were at risk of being arrested. San Francisco was hit hard by the pandemic, just like every other place. And there were definite rules about mask wearing, and you weren't supposed to be with more than two people without your mask on. But what I read was that on the ferries, these guys wanted to smoke their pipes, and they were taking off their masks, and they'd get in trouble for doing that. So maybe that's why these two were being hauled away. The way the ferry building was originally built, the lower level, which didn't have the natural light that it has now, was used for ticket offices, luggage, and luggage storage. The second floor was where passengers offloaded on double-decker piers, and then all these people would spill out down the central stairway of the building which is an interesting point to uh, talk about because for such a large building, one major stairway, and we're talking over 40,000 people, one of the cost-saving measures was not building a pedestrian bridge from the second level of the ferry building across the Embarcadero onto Market Street. It was actually added in in 1918 but was taken down within 20 years because San Francisco Bay, being the largest shipbuilding port in the world during the Pacific conflict, they needed the iron, so down it came. Just as the ferry system was at its peak, two bridges would give commuters another way to reach San Francisco. Automobiles became a popular item as people wanted to drive themselves around instead of taking the ferry. As a result, Ferry routes from Marin, Berkeley, and Oakland vanished as ridership plummeted. The dramatic drop in ferry usage was just staggering. Nobody was using the ferries. It was becoming a novelty rather than a mode of transportation. The ferry lines just stopped one by one because everybody was getting cars and everybody wanted to drive. And car ferries became a pretty big deal. You could just take the car ferry in to San Francisco and spend the day here or to Marin for a Saturday drive. So it really, it really changed things, having the car ferries. When the Bay Bridge was built, it, it actually had a train that went along the lower level. 
So that went from the East Bay in and it ended up at where our new Salesforce Transit Center is now. So that was an old, another way of getting into the city. So little by little, the ferry building started losing its purpose. What happened in the 40s and 50s, because of this downturn, they were trying to find a purpose for it. There were a number of proposals for a World Trade Center, and they wanted to build it on Bay Phil, which I think is a terrible idea in earthquake country. Um, obviously, this never got done, including one that had two very tall towers that look like the old World Trade Centers in New York, the little tiny ferry building tower in between them. And this, that was to maintain something of the ferry building. And this would have been on Bayfield too. I mean, just completely impractical. After the wars, the Eisenhower administration wanted to keep Americans employed and they wanted to strengthen the infrastructure for the United States. So they had an interstate freeway plan. There were plans for a major freeway system to go throughout San Francisco. And so the developers came off of the Bay Bridge and worked their way to the waterfront along the Embarcadero and San Francisco woke up. The plans were to be very, very efficient for cars to get through town. And once the San Franciscans saw what was happening, 200,000 people fought City Hall on this. The Embarcadero Freeway was stopped in its tracks and we had the great freeway to nowhere. But then we were stuck with the darn freeway, which cut us off from the ferry building, it cut us off from our shoreline, and Loma Prieta hit in 1989, and it gave us the opportunity to tear down the freeway. And that was the renaissance of the ferry building. plan was developed for a new ferry building and a whole new Embarcadero and how to handle traffic and they needed a concept for the building because I don't think they wanted all offices and that's when a plan was developed for a first class locally sourced food market emporium which reopened to great acclaim. The San Francisco Ferry Building has endured many ups and downs. It had a huge heyday in the early 1900s. It dwindled down to almost nothing. And after the Loma Prieta earthquake, it had a shot of adrenaline, helping revitalize the waterfront and fighting modern day traffic. There have been several terminuses that have been built around the bay, and there's plans for more. It's an investment in the future, and they feel that by making a reliable ferry system once again, the ferry building will be there to service people.